Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the cowl adapter for my dad's 40% uh, Hangar 9 Carbon Cub. Making this cowl adapter to move the cowl forward a little bit so that the um, engine that he purchased will. Well, the cowl will actually fit on the plane with the engine that he purchased. I was going to do this as a um, extension to the cowl, and then we decided that, well, someday if uh, he decides to get rid of the plane or whatever, or wants to put a different engine or whatever in there, didn't want to heavily modify the plane itself. That way, you just have to unbolt this cowl adapter off, unbolt the engine, and then whoever gets it next can start from scratch. They can put the smaller engine in if they want or whatever. So I doubt he'll ever get rid of the plane, but it's one of those things where just had to move the, the cowl when I put the engine in and then tried to put the cowl on. The uh, is about three quarters of an inch too short from the cowl fitting on otherwise it hit the head cylinder heads of the engine so anyways um, you can watch the previous videos to see exactly what happened there but in this video I'm going to actually be putting the balsa wood sheeting around the outer edge of it what I plan I pre-cut all my sheets and I'm gonna CA glue it kinda of like I did with these and I did put some wood glue along all this as you'll see that way it uh, and I put uh, some reinforcement in the middle part of it but where the where the screws are gonna screw in it's gonna have bolts on the outside and it's gonna have a plywood just like this on the inside I don't have the plywood cut for this video but we are going to get the sheeting C8 onto this. If I can remember what I did with my C8. Oh, it's over here. I'm very absent minded sometimes and misplace things and can't remember where I put it. But we are going to, we're going to have to cut some of these. I'm going to try to do this here, but this might be a little difficult. Let's go ahead and start with the simple one. And we are going to put this here. And it should be a pretty snug fit. That actually looks great. That is going to, with this rotate. This one's where we want it. And just, uh, just putting some CA on it. Like so. Simple enough. And then now we need to bridge from here to here. This is going to be the toughest bend, I think. I'm going to go ahead and twist this over to here. I'm going to do a lot of rotating, I can feel. In the end, I'm going to have to cut, too. So I think what I'll do is put some on the edge here. We'll get this stuck down. It needs to go. Ah, it looks like it's more where I wanted it. Got that set up for a little bit.
Now I have to do some final sanding so it might stick up in spots a little bit, but that's alright. I'm always sand it down flat. I'll just grab another one of these. I don't need as much CA as I put on the other one. Put too much on that it doesn't want to set up as well. Because this one here is actually going to protrude up higher because I forgot to cut it shorter. So I have this plywood in the middle. we'll do that. I think while that is drying, yeah, we'll let it set for a second. You don't want to rush things. And I'll just tilt this up a little bit like this and get some CA on the bottom here, on the edge. Get it started anyway. Like that, because now we're going to have to start some bending. Yeah, bend it a little bit and we shall put some in here. I'll have to hold that in place for a little bit while that sets. In any uneven spots, I do plan on doing, after this is all finished, I'll take some uh, wood filler because I want everything to be nice and round and I will smoothen out any unevenness with that. And again, I do plan on getting some monaco that matches the white on the plane and we'll end up monocoating around here and on the back a little ways and I plan on fuel proofing it all and all everything And then after this curvature is made, I do plan on making a template of the bottom and then doing a light ply um, piece that comes down probably a quarter of an inch that will glue onto these ribs as well and the balsa to give it some good strength. The cowl doesn't weigh a whole lot, but I did go online and notice if you ever have to replace the cow, it's uh, like 90 bucks for the cow itself. Now, just kind of set that on there like so and probably end up 
Ideally, if I would have shortened the actual template of the cowl, I could have just laid it on the top and just folded it. And I had to worry about this next cut. That'll be the fun part. I'm trying to. It's going to go with the grain, so it shouldn't be too terrible to cut this. Yeah, that's actually a piece of cake. Piece of cake. That indoor. And press it in. And there. And give that some glue there and should be good to go. How are we doing on time? 12 minutes already. So what I'll do is probably do the... So this don't become an, a super long video. I think the... It'll be pretty clear of the, the plan I'm doing here. I'm basically going to go all the way around the plane. Or the... Uh, adapter here. Kind of wish I would have done just one side. But this will go wrap around all the way to here. This is going to be open because when the air goes into the holes in front of the cowl it cools the engine and it's the cowl is designed for all the air to flow out down the bottom of the cowl and out with the exhaust. So I don't want to end up doing any sheet bridging between these two, because I want this to be all open. So let's just kind of work our way around here. Let's let's get another one of those smaller pieces here. Whoop. That was a failed attempt at putting that in there. I noticed we're kind of a tight fit when I dry fit it in. That one's actually too tight. Trim a little, sand a little off the bottom part. Wasn't square completely, evidently, on that one. Luckily, it's balsa. It's not too difficult. Let's go ahead and go around and start working on this one again. Give that glue a chance to, to set up there.
always fun to watch something that you you design out and you do like a rough sketch of it what you want to do but then you cut out your templates and then when you actually put trace it out onto the wood and then cut it out and you start to see it take shape that's always always fun to me anyway I like building things I had a lot of fun that's why I like my 3d printer so much it gives me a chance to be creative and design things crazy with the CA there. A little crazy with the blue. So now we'll do the same thing we did on the other side. Okay, we'll just spin to the 360, why not? Just because. I do like how that worked out last time. So we'll just do the same thing, hopefully. Hopefully we can repeat the same. Whoa. Oh, I'm glad that broke straight. I thought it was going to be all crooked. Yeah, it did go a little bit crooked. That's more like it. I can work with that. Like so. Before we glue that, let me put this other end in so I don't end up gluing my fingers yeah some of them are I guess you're better off having the sand a little bit off better to have to sand it and actually that's <laughs> kinda cleaning the plastic off there for me too dual purpose get another set of them sanding files. I got a bunch of sandpaper but I really like those files for the working on the plastic kits for sure. Okay. So we got our two pieces there in place. We'll go ahead and give them some glue. So, and then uh, let's go toward the bottom here while that's drying for a bit. These two don't want to be separated. Sorry, it's got to be done. Yeah, hey. 
definitely went bigger on that. I'm gonna go get my big sanding uh, block here. That was a mistake. I made my dog mad. <laughs> she thought I was intru an intruder, I think. Yeah, the sanding block has a little bit um, heavier grit. Way better. Way better. Yep, I'm thinking my dog's gonna keep barking the rest of the time here. I made her mad. I'm surprised the other two aren't going too. Try to get the roll on the bottom, that'd probably make it easier. Make life a little bit easier. Yeah, I got the 3D printer going again, making another one of them riser pieces for my paint trays. That poor 3D printer doesn't get a break on the weekends. stick in there. I only test fit a couple of them. But like I said, you're better off uh, having them a little bit bigger than a. Not big enough. And you gotta fill in the gap with the glue or redo it.
pushed it in a little too much. That I did not want to do. We got almost a half hour into this. It'd take me probably an hour and a half to finish this whole thing. That's modeling. Especially with these balls uh, ply models for me. It, I think it, I can do it in... Yeah, that'll take a half hour. No. Ends up taking half the afternoon. <laughs> Should be dry a little bit better. Oh, that's probably how I got glue at the bottom of it to begin with. Okay, that's kind of how I want it. Let's see how crooked we cut it this time. Put you there for now. Too long there. Balsa is easier to work with than the than the uh, light fly for sure. There we go. I really like the way that fits. I don't like where my finger is, but boy, glue that in place. I don't think I could have done that any better. one back in its spot. It's another thing too when you're building something. Um, for some reason it's easier when you're not recording.
because you got the you kind of got that stress of where you want to keep things moving along so it doesn't drag out but then you also want to make sure you're doing things correctly and uh, I'll put that by the USS Iowa it's kind of hanging out right next to me right now but yeah I like that I think everybody's got the idea of what I'm going with here so since it's already a 30 minute video I will just finish up the rest of this and in the next one we'll put the light ply pieces behind the smaller balsa pieces those will be where those uh, still don't remember what the name of those nuts are they got the three prongs on it and then when you tighten them down they cinch into the wood and uh, they stay there I am actually gonna epoxy the nuts though so that way just in case but yeah a little more progress on the cowl adapter and the next time we'll like I said we'll do that and I'll have these um, templates for the piece that's going to go on the outer part here to bridge this gap between these two pieces. Just to strengthen it up because I do want it to be pretty strong. Like I said that cowl really doesn't weigh a lot but you also want to make sure everything's nice and, and uh, robust I guess so that it can handle. You, you don't just have the weight is an issue you want it to be able to handle vibration and everything like that as well and the air is going to be coming in the cowl here you're going to have air forces and all that stuff in there just want to make sure everything's nice and solid so anyways that's that and i will continue to finish this up off camera i'd like to thank everyone for watching We'll see you guys next time.